I started out around 1984, out of school, my professional career, working on fine art, and I developed a style where I was studying the human form in motion. And I would go to Tai Chi classes and sketch while the people were doing Tai Chi. And you can see the forms in the paintings of this time. So for 30 years, this is the style that I marketed. It sold very well, it was well received, and it was, it was interesting and dynamic. While I was doing the fine art, I also had to support myself. So I took on a specialty, which was theater, scenic art, some costumes, and some props. I didn't have a camera around much in those days when I was working in the theater. I have a few photos and a lot of sketches. But I was on tour with Cirque du Soleil for four years, North America and Canada. This was the stage that I was responsible for maintaining, painting, and when new parts came, I would match them. And back to Chicago, I worked for Steppenwolf Theater, Redmond Theater, and a couple other scenic shops. Then decided to go into business for myself, doing murals and interior design, mainly commercial establishments and some residential. The very first mural that I did was at the Parthenon Restaurant of Greektown, and it was a picture of the Acropolis. And here we can see what it looked like through the window. This was then the second mural. Right away, getting into ancient themes and researching. This client was quite sophisticated, and she asked for cubistic art with traditional Greek elements. And that was just a wonderful proposal that I was happy to to meet. And we can see there's a bit of a poem. And the architect did wonderful things with lighting. As in the ceiling, we can see the hidden lighting. And the owner asked for something that looked like an abstract heaven for the ceiling, and that's what I came up with. This is what I looked like while I was painting that. So this kind of work was extremely messy and very labor intensive. This was another part of the Parthenon. Then they bought the building next door and opened up a small hotel. I was doing every aspect of the rooms the window treatments, the painting, the art. I got the idea to do hand-painted backboards. And really had fun with a lot of colors, sprucing up the old building. This was a mural that was in the hallway. It's still there at the Parthenon Guest House. I also had a billboard up on the roof. And this was done on four by eight pieces of exterior signboard. And I did another billboard for them. This one I was able to work out on the computer. It was printed on vinyl. Much easier with the newer technology. It's Papa Spiros. After a period of time doing murals, I was given an apprenticeship by an architect and trained to be an interior designer, where I got to pick out all of the elements of the whole job, and I'd make a composite board like you see. And you have a chance to look at the whole, the gestalt of the space, and then you put it all together. And very exciting time when all the products come in and the pieces all pulled together. This is the mosaic floor, and I did get down on my hands and knees and work on this with the contractors. When I did these jobs, 
I was the designer, but I also went in with the construction crews and worked. So I would do any of the faux finishes, the art, any murals. And people liked to have a designer that was so hands-on, that had such understanding of materials. And that really helped my business. It was great fun arranging things. This was a restaurant in Kenosha. And I based it on white peacocks, white birds. You can see the, the chandelier has peacocks. And the upholstery, the window treatments. This is another restaurant in Kenosha. Again, putting all of the elements together with extensive mural work throughout. And they always were striving for the feeling in these restaurants to be on the islands of Greece. The Athar restaurant in Elmhurst, Illinois, was a Persian themed restaurant. You're up 100 feet long and 30 feet high, and it depicted the Hanging Gardens of Babylon and the Tower of Babel. The inside of the restaurant asked me to recreate the Ishtar Gate. And so a great deal of research went into this on my part to portray very ancient figures into his restaurant space. Here at Dionysus in Worth, Illinois, the king's room in Knossos, on the island of Crete, 4,000 year old civilization. Again, so interesting to research and find the colors that they use. I remember one of my employees came to the job and he said, what will be the color scheme? And I said, burnt orange, gold, blue, and red. And he said, well, what is that? I said, well, that actually was the color scheme in those ancient days. They're martini blue and uh, getting up draping the ceiling I chose the fruitwood stain to complement the blue because this would be a dark place. And I wanted to give it as much life as possible. And here I am putting finishing touches on the window treatments. 13 foot piece that went into a breakfast restaurant. And there were these holes in their brick walls. And they asked me, what could I put in them to make it look like you were looking out the window. So I went down the street to of an old pioneer town and I painted the pictures from that park and went and put them in those holes in the wall. The same client left me at one of his places one day and he just had surprised me. And he showed me this 20 foot by 25 foot wall and I put this together in one day. And when Nick came back, he was very, very pleased and surprised. This is all flat drywall, except for the lights, and I painted it to look like an ornate exterior of a flower shop. People enjoy the trompe l'oeil, which means fools the eye in French. So uh, many people asked me to do that. This was a very fun mural. Now I did the inside also. Don't have many pictures of the inside. And here we can see the outside with many signs that I did seven in this same style. And it was quite popular. And then many of these people would have me every year I would go in and redo it. So steady work, steady customers with these uh, beautiful Greek restaurants. This is an outdoor mural on a brick wall. This customer wanted a hole in his wall. It's back to a stage, and the faces are the faces of the two founders of that prop theater. This is in Oak Park, on the Altrex, and people really enjoyed this, where it looks as if the tree it goes right through, extends from the bottom to the top. And one time I had a studio in the Oak Park Arts District. And these are some pictures of 
what I did with the inside of my art studio, creating a forest. And this was at a time where I did a lot of abstract work. I was hired by Boeing to paint a 16-foot picture of a bomb that was given to the government of Taiwan and hangs in a major government building. This was done here in Dwajak, and that's out at Sister Lakes at the bed, no breakfast. A fun, a fun mural. And he also had me paint his pontoon bow and some of my residential design. A lot of window treatments. Here we see the screen and all the different fabrics, textures. Mm -hmm. Murals in children's room are always a popular item. I was very pleased with the way some of these came out. And the clients would ask for all sorts of things. This was in a children's room, and this was in the same room. This lady asked me to make her basement look like a street in Paris, France. So that's what I did. These people wanted their whole basement to be underwater. And it was a full surround. It was a very, very cute playroom for their children. Here we have a rocket ship. This fellow likes geometric patterns. And this client asked for Elvis Presley on the wall in his basement next to his dryer that was painted like a tiger. The wonderful client at this house came up with this idea. And you see, this is all the trapeloi. Those are not real chairs. They're painted chairs and a painted corner in the room. So the idea was to not be able to tell where the reality ends and the painting begins. And then the, the lady who owned the house, she further installed her butler. And out in the main room in the same house, she had me paint this background of a wave and then... She put a shark's head and a hanging pirate. These people asked if their wall above their bathtub could look like Sicily at the sunset. This lady wanted abstract style orchids. They wanted Arizona desert in their bedroom. This is just a, a simple kitchen design. This lady wanted to feel like she was on the beach in Florida when she was in her bedroom. This fellow asked to have his living room and dining room look like a 1950s martini bar. Had a lot of fun doing that. I like to work with the watercolor washes, sometimes my murals, to give a softer look. These walls are supposed to look like old metal walls. All the paints were metallic and just many pretty things people asked for and I enjoyed doing things over the top of the chandeliers a lot of cute little details people asked for cracked plaster and bricks and vines inside their bathrooms so that's what I did whatever they wanted and there's a pillar in a hallway and they wanted New Orleans so this was at a garage in a mailbox out by Sister Lakes and another garage out in Sister Lakes. And I also did murals with student groups where the children did the work and I supervised. They always had wonderful ideas. This was a collaboration between Dominican University, one of the grade schools, and myself all come together to create this mural. And we put the children in charge. And this lady was the principal of the school. And here's our team of workers. This was here in Benton Harbor. And this is at the Boys and Girls Club. Kids did all of the conception and the painting. Back to Oak Park, groups with children. This is at the Crassel Arts Center in St. Joseph. And we did a set, a stage for Shakespeare in the park. And this is what the backdrop looked like. And here we have some of the children performing. It was a wonderful event. And the oldest employer of artists is probably the church because the churches were always so full of art. So traditionally, artists look for jobs as I did in the church. 
14 feet and hung it over a baptismal. They wanted the face is hidden. This is 16 feet. It's in a soup kitchen. They requested a Mexican Jesus with a serape. I was blessed to be able to do the interior design of the entire church and school and pick out all of the elements. Then being true to my usual way, I got up there on 80 foot in the air with a team of painters and painted those stencils that I had designed and made myself onto the ceiling. Also banners for churches is something I've been able to do and enjoy. It's wonderful to see your work up in a place like that. Then was able to put more time into my fine art and developed a new look with animals, realistic animals, on abstract backgrounds. And that kept me going for a while. They sold very well. I was also doing commissions and portraits at the time. Then I just really wanted to do something that I had been thinking about for a long time. And that's a little bit more fantasy, magical, circus type of themes. Paintings evolved into a whole series, which then became a book called The Tournament of Magic, which is now available on Amazon. I began teaching in 2007, and I find that to be very inspirational, as well as doing my own work and exhibiting. I also am the director of a nonprofit named Blue Dart Art, which is in Cass County, Michigan. And I enjoy hosting exhibitions of artists from the community. For more information, feel free to check out my website, otart.org, and join us for a class or for an event, if you please.